Okay, the video rant for tonight. This for, this is the under the duvet, because it's extremely cold at the moment, the under the duvet, ranting from under the duvet rant, which is a bit strange, but there you go. Something new. And so, Something I got on my mind recently about uh, the amount of in modern day society is uh, particularly prevalent. The amount of time people spend staring at screens and uh, to consider whether that is part and parcel of whether it's natural or not in terms of being a human being. So I came across this blog, which is dated March 8th, 2016. So this goes back two and a half years. So uh, what this talks, what they talk about in this blog, the situation is probably uh, greater in terms of the issues. So just remember, this was written March 8th, 2016. So uh, I came across this blog. They say some pretty interesting things in here. Screen time is a minefield for modern parents. Smartphones, laptops, and tablets haven't been around long enough for any long-term studies. Uh, maybe about now, sometime later here. Yeah. Certainly going forward from here, they should be doing some studies about that now. Um, just sort out on my headphones. We, we still don't know the full impact of technology on developing brains. However, anyone who has spent any time around a toddler with an iPad knows that screens have a powerful hold on children. So what do we know about technology in children? Multiple studies have shown that excessive media use can lead to problems with attention, difficulties in school, sleep and eating disorders, uh, obesity. Furthermore, internet addiction is associated with structural changes in brain regions that involve emotion processing, attention, decision making and cognitive control. So you think of the scenarios of modern day society, if they're allowed to take the mobile phone to the bedroom, the chances are that phone's not going to get switched off. So, you know, staying up for half the night, messing about on a mobile phone, and then not being able to function properly the next day because they haven't had sufficient sleep. The average American child spends more than seven hours a day looking at screens. And so this was, remember this was back in March 8th. 2016. That's the, this article is two and a half years old. So that figure may be a bit higher by now. But as of 2016, yeah, uh, spends more than seven hours a day looking at screens. This is considered fairly normal by current standards. Because of this, the American Academy of Pediatrics recently refined its guidelines regarding screen time to reflect a more nuanced approach to technology. Previously, it recommended that children under age three have absolutely no exposure to screens, and older children no more than two hours per day. Many parents found these guidelines impossible to follow. These days, the guidelines follow a much more common sense approach. Parents should limit children's screen time and always offer educational media in non-electronic formats first. They should also establish screen-free zones at home. There should be no televisions, computers or video games allowed in children's bedrooms. This will help parents monitor exactly what their kids are doing online, as well as avoid problems with childhood sleep disorders. But that's not exactly true now though, is it? Okay, well, here it says there should be no televisions, computers, or video games allowed in children's bedrooms, but what about the phone? 
the modern phone is a mini PC. Um, they really, they really aren't phones anymore. They got uh, the vast majority of people are using them for the additional functions that those devices provide. Shouldn't really be calling them phones at this point. But your modern day phone is capable of recording high definition video, high definition pictures, is capable of connecting to the internet, is capable of streaming over the internet. Uh, web browsing and all that stuff, access to any internet sites, it's all doable on a phone. You, know, you, you don't need a laptop, you don't need a tablet, you don't need a desktop PC. Um, it can all be done on a phone. Play games on a phone. Etc, etc. So if they are allowed to take their phones into bedrooms and places like that, how are parents going to be monitoring what they're doing online? Well, that's my question. So I get uh, sidetracked off the article. At the Nanny Authority, our clients are comprised primarily of parents who do not allow their children access to screens and in fact look exclusively for caregivers who can engage their children without the help of televisions or tablets. One of the many reasons our clients seek out many placement services to help them with their childcare needs is that they want to feel completely assured that their chosen nanny will have a strong enough childcare background to keep their children busy with developmental, educational and physical activities and not simply sit them down in front of a TV. Now, this is not to say that screens are evil or that there aren't developmentally appropriate activities that can be supplemented with the use of an app or computer program. The most important rule for screens is to use them wisely. Tablets, smartphones and computers are ubiquitous in our society today. It's nigh impossible to avoid them entirely. And that's the thing. I'm, uh, I'm old enough, I'm of sufficiently of the older generation to know, um, to remember what life was like before the smartphone before the internet and before social media sites. Um, so I do remember a time when your exposure to screen time was largely restricted to the evenings, maybe two or three hours watching television in the evenings, maybe a bit longer on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, that was pretty much what the screen time used to consist of. So going back to the 1970s, the 1980s. Um, but maybe this could be a separate rant. I don't, I don't know if I should be included in this one or not, but there's also an awful lot to be said about exposure to things like pornography, the kind of thing that teenagers are looking at nowadays via internet access. So uh, when I was a teenager growing up, the closest I got to anything erotic would have been staring at the page three sun calendar hanging on the back of the bathroom door. Uh, the page three, uh, uh, <laughs> page three? Uh, the sun newspaper doesn't even do page three anymore. They stopped doing it. But I mean, back in the day, so the page three, the page three sign calendar hanging on the back of the bathroom door was a bit of, so it would have been a theme now. Probably showing her breasts. Um, that's about the size of it really. No other private parts of the body exposed. A bit of titillation. Uh, that was about it. But the point I'm making is, of course, back in my day, the page three sign calendar was about as sort of exotic, erotic as it got. 
because no internet, no computers, no smartphones, and no internet access. Today's teenagers will go online and because a lot of it is free to view, all they've got to do is search for it. And very extreme pornographic material is just a few clicks away. And the kind of stuff that they are potentially looking at is a far cry from the page three sun calendar from the 1980s in terms of the, uh, the extremeness of the content. Uh, without getting too graphic right now, I just wanted to uh, throw that in there as well. As um, some stuff I've been reading recently points towards a teenage boy exposure to extreme pornography online is affecting their attitudes towards the way they view girls. And in real life, that is, their attitude towards girls. So uh, that's another subsection to be looked at. Back to the article, parents and nannies should always be sure to place heavy emphasis on in-person interactions and imagination-based free play. Children learn best by interacting with other people, not by passively watching what happens on a screen. Couldn't agree more. I uh, really like this article. Um, I'll link to it. So the headline blog up here says Screen Time the Scourge of Modern Society? Question mark. Well, something has to be said about it. There is a discussion to be had there. It's very clear to me, if you could do the comparison between the 1970s and 1980s decades and present day, clearly the amount of screen time that people are having every day has gone up pretty massively. And there it endeth, the under the duvet rant for right now, very early in the morning, it's below freezing outside temperature wise. And I will probably uh, dive back under the duvet at this point and get a bit more rest. So, thanks for listening to this video rant.